into your senses. Add a fifth part. A fifth part is 20%. You've only got 100%, and a fifth part of 100 is 20. doesn't take a, a, a scholar, a college graduate to figure that out. He, charged, he said, add a fifth part to it. Why? Because you didn't bring it into my house where my people would have me. You see, if we don't give our tithes and offerings, the gospel can't go out. And I'm not preaching to this church. Hopefully, I pray that all of you are doing what you're supposed to do. Because this is the givenest church in Moore County. We may not have the numbers on the board that these other churches have. And we may not have the savings accounts that these other churches have. But praise God, there's a registry in heaven. And Sister Jennifer, on that registry in heaven, there's a number of our brother David. Sister Kim, there's a number of how many souls have been saved, how many lives have been changed because of this little church, because of this little outreach. They Praise God, there's a number in heaven that I'm interested in. I'm not interested in what you can put on the board back here about how many is in attendance. I'm not interested in how many come to church. And I'm not interested in what the offering is as far as getting it up into the thousands or hundreds of thousands and building funds and stuff. I'm not interested in any of that thing. I'm interested in one number, and that's the number on the other side of the Jordan, that number in heaven. I want to know how many souls, God, how many are we changing today? How many are we helping to lead to the Lord? How many lives are being turned around? How many alcoholics are being set free? How many drug addicts are being set free? Because they heard the Word of God that wasn't watered down, that wasn't lukewarm. Hallelujah. That was hot straight out of the throne room. That's the Word of God that pierces. That's the Word of God that cuts going in and coming out. And church, we need to be about the Father's business. He said, be steadfast, unmovable, hallelujah. And church, that's what we have to do today. Steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of God. Always abounding in God's work. You need to be serving God, you youngsters, while you're in school next week. You need to be lifting up the name of Jesus. You need to tell the teacher, listen, I know you can't tell me about Jesus, but let me tell you about Jesus. He's my Savior. He's my Lord. He blesses me coming in and going out. He makes me the lender, not the borrower. He makes me the head, not the tail. Start witnessing. And if they kick you out of school, praise God, you get a vacation. Hallelujah. God will see to it that they won't. Always abounding. Now, I want you to go with me. There's a story in the Bible. This is where I was supposed to probably be anyway. And those joining by television, we won't get into it. We can't get into it very hard. I'm going to try to get into it here, either today or tonight, one. But in, 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 in Luke 19, verse 12 and 13 is what I want to read for just a second, or and 14. And, and it says here, and he said, therefore, Luke 19, 11, 12, 11, excuse me, Luke 19, 12, 13, 14. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy until I come. Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Now, that's, that's where I want you to, to understand. Occupy means be busy. Be about my business. Be working, be busy, be, stay busy until I come. Don't sit around twiddling your thumbs. And you see, this great nobleman was Jesus Christ. And he came and he chose his people. And he, he gave all of us a gift and he told us all to occupy. Get, be about my work, be about my business until I come back. Because I'm going away and I'm coming back to receive this kingdom. I'm going to get a kingdom. I'm going to bring it back here. We'll get into this in more detail. But occupy. You see, he's given every single one of us the gift of faith, a measure of faith. He's given you a measure of faith and he's given us all a gift. Some may be a dollar is your gift. or Some may be a hundred dollars is your gift. But he's given every one of us one gift. And in the Bible, he gave every one of them one pound. He called ten men or ten people. And he said, I give each one of you one pound. And I got to go away. But occupy until I come. Use the talent that I've given you. Use the gift that I've given you. Some of you have the gift of singing. Some the gift of intercessory prayer. Some of you are just givers and your helpers and your laborers and your workers. And, and, and whatever your calling is, he's given it to you. To use. Some of you have a talent of using equipment. 
Some of you have a talent of using computers. Some of you have a talent of just cleaning. But he's given you a talent. And in the word of God, we found that this king went out and he came back. And he called the first servant. He said, now I gave you one pound. What have you done with it? He said, oh, king, I used that talent you gave me. I used that pound you gave me. And I have gained 10 pounds. I have used the gift that you've given me, and I've led 10 people to the Lord with that gift. Oh, thou good and faithful servant, in the kingdom to come, come on into the kingdom, I'm going to put you over 10 cities. You see, all of us were drafted into the God's army. We were drafted in, and each one of us came in as privates. And as you use your rank, and you use the responsibilities that God has given you, you earn promotions. Another one he called, and that other one came. He said, O king, you gave me one, and I now have five. I've led five to the Lord. He said, okay, I'm going to put you over five cities. I'm going to put you in charge of five cities in the the future. And he called another one. He said, where's my pound? And he said, well, I I hid it. I didn't use it. I I, I knew that I was going to get into the kingdom, and I just wanted to be sure that I didn't make you mad. So I didn't do anything. If you study the Bible, they didn't cast him into hell. They took that which he had and gave to another. Took the city that he was to be over and gave it to the one who had ten. But it didn't cast him into hell. He called him wicked. He said, oh, you wicked servant. But he didn't take his salvation. He still got into the kingdom. But then down in the verse below that, he goes to talking about the enemy. He said, now we're going to go through and we're going to destroy the enemies. Those joining my television right now, God's given you a talent. And you've got sin in your life. You know you have. And I'm going to ask you, if you feel led to say this prayer, to repeat it with me. Father God, I am a sinner. I'm asking you to place my sins under the blood of Jesus, for I'm repenting right now. I believe that Christ is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead. And I'm asking you to write my name in the Lamb's book of life and seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, I know it was brief, but if you said that prayer and you meant it in your heart, God just saved you. You need to get grounded, get in church. Call us and let us know that we can send you some free books. Pray for this ministry always. Support us when you can. Remember, Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you.